everyone, it's the Chess Nerd back at it again with a brand new video. Finally, we've all been waiting for it. The unboxing of the Dubrovnik chess pieces, Bobby Fischer's favorite chess set. Brand new, I hope you like it. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, do what you gotta do, enjoy. The Dubrovnik set, take three. So this chess set is very special for two reasons. Dos. Number one, this is a replica of the chess set used in the ninth Olympiad um, in Dubrovnik, Croatia in 1950. In an interview, he said that the Dubrovnik set was his favorite chess set out of all of them for its lightness. So you see how this, the piece here, well, like, it's pretty light, I must admit. So the lightness of the pieces. Yeah, uh, well, the one I played with uh, in Spassky in 92 is uh, it's the original Dubrovnik set, and it's very, very rare. I mean, it's almost impossible to get one, or, or to get one if you can get one in good condition, you know. But it's absolutely, I think it's the best uh, chess set I've ever played on. You, you remember it, usually, no? Yeah, 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 I saw it, so, yeah. And it's just a joy to play with, the, 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 the joy to hold. Uh, the definition of the pieces, the design, I mean, it's, it's just a marvelous set, but it's very hard to get. I don't have it. It was stolen, too, and uh, I used to love to play with that because the, the wood was so hard. It was very hard to break it. It was very, very light, perfect for traveling with, you know? Okay. And, uh, and the balance of the pieces, and uh, the pieces didn't fall over, and the, and the design, it's just, just a great, great set. So, yeah, you heard it here first from... Uh... From Bobby Fischer. Um, it, it's a really good set, and another reason why it's so good is because this chess set has no religious symbols. So you'll see the bishop with with no cut. It's gonna have a little thing like my Zagreb chess set. I'm just gonna, just like my Zagreb chess set in boxwood, uh, in boxwood and bud rosewood. It has opposite finial finials on the bishops instead of a. Uh, sort of mitre cut that you usually see in the bishop. A mitre cut is a traditional cut, like this one. You can clearly, you can clearly see the, the cut inside, and this one, smaller, smaller mitre cut. So you'll see the bishop, not only the bishop has no religious symbols, you'll see also the king, it doesn't have a cross on it, like all the kings you've ever seen. Uh, this king has a little dot, like a finial, like this, but I think it's supposed to be wider. I haven't opened the set yet. The kings are also uh, non-religious, and it's very particular because no other set has this these uh, traits, you know. So let's unbox it. In the, oh, here we go with another, a queen. Look at that beautiful queen. So yeah, in the Dubrovnik tournament in uh, 1950, which was the ninth chess Olympiad, uh, you know, teams of the best players from each, each country play against each other. And the top three in that tournament, here's another queen, another black queen. Beautiful. The wood is Shishan. Which I'm said is gold in the rosewood, theoretically speaking. with green padding on the bottom here. So yeah, the top three teams um, in that Dubrovnik tournament in 1950 were Yugoslavia, who won the gold medal. Uh, oh my god, great players, such as Pirk, uh, you know, the one who invented the Pirk defense. Gligoric, which is, who is in our, our 1953 uh, Zurich International Chess Tournament. Uh, and then second place, you have Argentina, 
another queen here. Argentina, who's composed of uh, Miguel Nashdor, Nashdor, who was one of the top players at the time. Uh, very, very good player. He's also in our 1953 uh, Zurich tournament that we are currently studying. So this is the king. This is what they look like, the kings. So they have no cross here compared to the traditional king. These are all my other kings. See, there's a big cross there. 19th century, they had a lot of crosses. Um, and then you have a cross here. It's not as big, but there's always a cross on the king, traditionally speaking. The cross of the Christian church, of course. And this one. So yeah. But this one has a finial, a filial, fin, filly, filial, uh, which is like a ball on top of its head. It's really particular there. I've never seen this before. So. And so in the Argentinian team, you have Miguel Nashdorf, you have Balbo Balbocan. I don't know these people. But they ended up with... Uh, 33 points and a half. This is the second bishop. Wow, it's good. And then in third place, you have West Germany, which is important to say West because in 1950, there were still two Germanys after the Second World War. There was East, East Germany and West Germany. You can even see this all the way to World Cups uh, and soccer, where East Germany and West Germany were two different teams. So This is a rook. It's kind of fatty-like. It's not very tall. I like it. So this is a, a particularity of rooks of this Dubrovnik set. So it has five creases. You see these little creases? One, two, three, four, five. It has five of them. So that, re that represents all five regions of Croatia, the beautiful country of Croatia, which I am going to um, this summer in July. So I'll take you guys on that trip. Um, be excited because I'm going also to Dubrovnik. Uh, so yeah. Beautiful rook, and in the West Germany team, you have wow players I don't even know. Unziker, Schmidt, Pfeiffer, and Relstab Stolt. So they ended up in third place in front of U.S., which is incredible because U.S. have a sort of a good team. Um, they have um, Samuel H. Rzewski. Who is in the uh, 1953 Zurich tournament? They have uh, Steiner, Horowitz. I know Horowitz. I don't know Steiner. Uh, Horowitz was a good player, I think. And they had other people such as Scheinswitt, Kramer, Evans. I don't. Well, USA came in fourth place uh, by a hair. Uh, West Germany beat them by half a point. So this is the famous knight of the Dubron of the Dubrovnik set. So beautiful. Look at those details on that knight. Cut perfectly. It's beautiful eyes. This is the first kind of a knight or rook or bishop or queen I have ever gotten in my life. Even when you compare a Chevet set with a, you know, an American Staunton set, set or any types of sets, really, the, the knight is similar, but this one, this is particular. 
The only other set with a weird kind of knight is the Zagreb set. And I have the Zagreb set. Where the knight has a really crooked back, right? That goes back on... That's a very, like, special uh, trait of the... Of the Zagreb set with the knight that's all, like, crooked and stuff. So let's move on here. We haven't even done a pawn, which is crazy, because there's, you know, half the probability of choosing a pawn from the beginning. I think we have our first pawn. No, it's another rook. So the second set I'm opening up is a Knubel set, and it's a favorite set of Bent Larsen, who is a Norwegian player. That's a rook. Here we have another knight. so far so yeah in that I wanted to uh, to analyze that whole Olympiad that that was a du that was in Dubrovnik with this set this is where the the first time this is the first time that the set was actually presented later on it was actually uh, presented in the famous 1992 I believe match uh, rematch Spassky Fisher with, when they played, they played with an original uh, Dubrovnik set. I think we have another king here. So players in that Dubrovnik tournament in 1950, even though they didn't win, uh, great players played in that tournament. So you have, you also have to remember this is three years before the Zurich tournament in 1953. We have players like um, Bobby Fischer, who are, I don't I don't think he's even alive. They're they're not even there yet. The kings are kind of blind. I must admit, the queen king. Yeah, the bishops are lighter uh, than my Zagreb bishops. This is a set that's made to be traveled with. I mean, the pieces are quite, they're quite light so far. So yeah, players in the Dubrovnik tournament in 1950 were, uh, so you had players like, like Max Uwe, younger uh, than, uh, than in Zurich. You had Poulsen of Denmark, Peru 14th, that's incredible. Um, not many players I know actually, in the 1950s, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to analyze the 1950 uh, Dubrovnik chess tournament. But I realized there's like twice as many games as um, as Zurich, which already has 210. By the way, I think we're at 101 games on 210, so we're almost halfway there for the Zurich tournament. I should get going on that one too. I, uh, I'm trying to find spots around the city to uh, to get a nicer picture for you guys, not just do it in my house, which has been uh, a common occurrence. So the pawns are underneath another coating of packaging. That's why I haven't had any yet. Oh, 
I love the idea of, this, of inverse uh, inverse colors on the finials. It's just it's remarkable. You only find that in, in Zagreb and and Dubrovnik chess sets. You know, it's crazy. So another bishop. Like large, look at that base. The base is really large compared to your normal pawn. So yeah, so yeah that's the pawn. Very fun pawn. My other set. for a chess set a uh, chess board that's small enough to be able to be to travel with with these pieces and the final piece of the Dubrovnik set so the pawn it. the other one so leave a like subscribe please and um see you next time